That that was the one member I said I, I pulled it. Yeah. I knew when as soon as I shot I pulled. Three hundred yards. Dropping. Of course it's not everybody who's sighting a gun at three hundred freaking yards. That's a seven eighty eight Remington in twenty two two fifty. You're gonna try hundred yards, we dialed it in, and then I'm gonna try two hundred and forty yards down by that tree. All right, through this four power Weaver scope uh, from the 60s, took three shots at 100 at the lower left hand triangle, and I think I uh, blew one of them. Took three shots at the bug at 250 yards, and then took three shots at the four, is it 450 yard, 460 yard tank out there. And I put it to the top of the paper. What is that? That is a 19223 Calhoun. So we shot with that one at 300? 300. And at the 450? Or just no, the 300? Just 300. Okay. Four rounds at the 300. So the 100 yard with a 22250, that was the first shot. I kind of pulled that one, and that was the second shot. That about right? And this is where we were dialing it in, is we use the scope. That was the first three, and then we dialed the scope to there, dial it again, then dial it again, and then took one more click to the left, and that's where I got those three. The heck with the walking crap. <laughs> first couple times felt pretty good. Yeah. But... Get out to the 460. Oh, I was shooting kind of center of mass of the bug, so I'm not really sure where it's going to end up. Looks like it's splattered. One there, two, one there, and one three. there. That's actually not bad. No, that's a good group for 240. Yeah, with that gun. Now, I was kind of shooting for center mass, so we're still going, we're still edging to the right. But you know something, I wonder if it's just the way we're holding it changes from, you know, group, because I was using a different hold. All right, this is the 300 yard with a 17 caliber. And what were you aiming at? I was holding right on the top of, right on the top of that. So again, I'm shooting right and two and a half inches low. And this was the Calhoun? Nope, that was the 17. This is the Calhoun. This was the 17 Fireball. Wow, what a group. This 300 is, freaking yards. This is the Calhoun. All right, this is what 460 yards looks like. And we put the 22, 250, and I was aiming, I was aiming up here, but we were right. We heard a tank. Now I would have expected it to be down in here somewhere. So you gotta look for fresh. So I'm thinking, see that's fresh. That's fresh and see it went right through the tape and that's fresh. Those are pretty big holes, though, for a little gun. But, yeah, I can see where it actually went through the tape. And that would be right and down, so... I think we've got to take a couple more clicks over and test that theory. Gee, I just wouldn't have thought they would have gone through. Well, these pretty much convinced me I hit it, because... There's the tape, the way the tape was, and it knocked the tape off. So, that's where they are. So... I guess what we got to do, because I was aiming for up here, so I'll go over two clicks and up two clicks. So where we're shooting from is where the truck is on top of the hill. It's 460 yards. Dean's pretty much got me convinced, because that's fresh. It's just I didn't think a 22 250 would poke a hole at that angle, but the evidence is this tape right here. That tape was on the ground. And that hole obviously went right through the tape. So I think he's correct. And I'm wrong. But I'll take it. <laughs> we did two clicks to the left on that old Weaver 4 power. And one click up. So we're going to do center of mass on the bug. And I'm going to do the top of the paper 
at the 460 yard target and see whether or not we were correct. This is just American Eagle ammo too. This is not exactly, you know, high quality stuff. I took six shots, three at the lower piece of paper, and then one of them I had the bag on the barrel, so it probably screwed that grouping up. And then I put the bag up there, so it's a slightly different hold, and then three at the top piece of paper. We'll see how it works out. Well, I think uh, Dean solved the mystery of why we're getting a big hole in those out there. These are jacketed hollow points, so they flared right out. You know, or what I was shooting two or three winters ago was ball, so they're just gonna poke a hole versus actually flare out, you know, mushroom out. Here we are shooting. I don't know if you can see the two does sitting right there. All right, where'd they go? Get my Good glasses up there. One there, one there, and one there. Holy crap. I can't argue with that one either, can I? Not at 240. Yeah, here are the other ones over here. So we did move a little bit. We might be at the end of the gimbals though on that scope. But nice, yeah. nice group. The whole point of this is that's a gun that nobody would even look at on the shelf. They would just bypass it. But they're probably worth like 350 bucks, right? Even that. Yeah. You know? 75 maybe. But it actually pokes High holes in uh, legitimately at some long distance. Get some young eyes and some good glass on that gun. It's probably, you know, might be an inch and a half. Yards. All right, let's see what it did at 460 yards. Bam, here's one. Here's two. It does make a big hole. Look at that. Look at the Holy size of them holes. Crawl. There's one. There's two. That's three right down there. Oh, no, there's three right there. There's, there's one. Three. Oh, I see what happened. Look at this. This is one. To now, this is an old one. See, I marked it. Oh, okay. That's marked. But that's not. That one's not. That's new. One, two, and three. All right. You hit right on that seam. That's aiming somewhere in here. And then I was aiming somewhere, I don't know, in here. And there's one, there's two. And I may have pulled it or the third one. But I, I take that as a grouping. <laughs> I take this as a grouping at 460 yards. 400 yards? 460 yards? But that's definitely one, two, three at 460. That's splattered up this way. And that's definitely one. Wait a minute, what's that? Yep, there's one. Son of a gun, found one, it. One, two, three, four, one, five, six. six. Yep, they're all there. They're all there. Down. See, that's the little tiny hole right there. So if I put my hand there and you were holding I was holding up in here somewhere right in there so you got three of them right there look at the size of that hole I know it punching in there I'm out there I think I'm gonna make it a wrap not bad for a, oh, the deer back up there look at that there at the very end of the field let me see if I can zoom up and see them the camera Cause I got a computer at the house now. Yeah, you know, the, the channel is a fleet command, one word, all lowercase. But, so what do I got to do with those bullets? Those are hollow points and they're 50, no, they're, yeah, they're 50 grain hollow points. 50 grain jacketed hollow points. And they're dropping almost uh, 15 inches at the 460 yard mark and they were uh, about dead on at the 240 yard mark. I have to get a better ballistic coefficient. And you're saying if I get rid of the hollow points, get a, you know, like a ballistic tip or something like that. Narrow, yeah, narrow tip. What grain do you think I should run? 50 or 55. 
I would stick with 50 since you're getting really good results with 50. I'd, I would stick with 50. What kind of bullet do you think would go down the range, keep its trajectory better? Sierra makes a fantastic tip. Um, Sierra, Nosler. I think that gun has earned a scope. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna reload those, right? Absolutely, yep. We're gonna find out what that thing can do. Okay, we're gonna go dead center bullseye at 300. With a Calhoun, 19223. Well, I, I think there's a striking difference in the ammo. Uh, for, this is this is what uh, Dean's running. And this is what we're running in that 788 Remington. Corrosion and all. <laughs> all right, this is the, is it 17 caliber? 19. 19 caliber Calhoun right there. He's complaining about that group, and we were shooting from 300 yards. He was shooting from 300 yards. And those deer are right back out. Wish I had the other camera. I didn't plan on doing a video. One, two, three. At 460 yards, and he was aiming at there. So they went down and away to the. Roughly 14 inches, probably. 14, 16 inches. Yeah. They didn't drop as much as the 22250, though. The 22250 was down here. Look at the difference in the hole, the size of the holes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Calhoun. So the, there's a little difference between that kind of a group and that kind of a group right there. That's what you get with having a really, really fine uh, built rifle. Guy knows how to shoot. We're actually got a little more of a cross breeze than I thought. 10 mile an hour gusts. Yeah, we're getting gusts. You know, it's really hard to see on the camera. You can see it with the target. And them little tiny pills. You, how, how, how many grains are those little pills? 40 grain. They're 40 grain? 40. So actually, we're about the same then. I'm 50 grain. You're 50, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what we need to do, you know, what we need to do is we need to get some of that tape and um, put it on a stake next to it. Yep. You know, we can start actually thinking windage and elevation. Yeah, we're far. Yeah, to, yeah, we're far enough down range here, where the wind is going to make a difference. I want to forget this deer. They're out there looking at us now. We've been hammering away now for what an hour? An hour and a half, probably a couple. Yeah, probably two hours. And there they are. They don't care. All right, we're gonna change gears and put the old twenty-two. 250 away it's I think it's earned a different scope what do you think and we're going to go to a Remington 700 yet again a rather inexpensive rifle and it has a no name scope on it there's not a marking on it anywhere and see what we got with this gun the video's done but the day's not done Let's see if I can get some of the muzzle blast Again, this was with a 223 Remington with a heavy barrel. It'd make me laugh if the darn 22250 outshot it. But I don't know where these are. I was shooting at the bug eye, top of his head here. So I don't know what I've got. There's it's one. one. There's two. two. One I pulled real hard to the right. I bet that's it right there. Yep. I was watching it walk that way and I pulled the trigger. A lot of splatter. And yeah, that was a pull. There's three. Mm -hmm. So knew that. if I'm in that range, I, I, the 22-250 is still shooting a better group. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Junk pile gun there. 
and I can actually see the bug head with this with the scope on that gun you know I couldn't hardly see it with the four power at 300 yards that one, that one, and I think that's the one I said I pulled on. Pulled. That's one of those, oh shucks, I did one inch at 300 yards groupings. Oh, I pulled one, it was two inches. Two inches, yeah. <laughs> now I was struggling a little bit with that. This is actually the one I had the best hold with uh, on the, 20, the 223. Where are they? One, two, I'm happy. Wow. Four inch? And I was, sh I was aiming right there. The four inches at 400 and, yeah, I'm happy with that, Dean. Yeah. But that was the only one I had a good hold. That's the only one I could actually use the, the bipod on. So that's yeah. why they were that good. Yeah, we're both dealing with a crosswind here. And that's beginning to affect all, all of us off to the right pretty consistently just about the same amount too yeah There's all calhoun remington remington yeah we gotta scare the deer out of there you said they won't last it they're just laying down right there watching us they're not even a little bit worried about us unless nobody hunts up in this right up in this area then we say you know i've got my game warden ron you know ron he kind of keeps track of things up here. And I tease him, I should not put this on video, but I'm gonna. It's like I always used to tease him by saying, I had him take care of the hunting up here because I knew my deer was safe. <laughs> yeah, they're just laying right there. I think we need to scare the hell out of them so they, get, they have a chance of survival. So this is the cast of characters for the day. And that's just a simple Remington 700 um, what used to be called ADL, I don't know what they call it now, but it doesn't have a box magazine. You got to load it from the top. And uh, the trigger, eh, I don't like the trigger. The gun has potential, no name scope, but actually the trigger on this thing right here was, was better for me than that one. And this is an old 788 with a Weaver 4 power scope. And it's got a box magazine, which is really kind of cool. Kind of pinch it, it comes right out. And uh, the trigger wasn't bad at all. A little heavy, but it was crisp. Probably more potential in that gun. But I had more fun with this one. And then of course, there's that one right there, which is a tack driver at 400 freaking yards. Might call this video the beauty and the beast, you know? <laughs> but the end of the day, I'll put these away. It's getting a little bit late. So no, we didn't close the video off. We still did some more shooting. You got a couple of deer right over the hillside there. I could probably walk right up to them. Yeah, I'm beginning to get cold too. That was a good day.